What's up guys, welcome back. Uh, today I got a bunch of parts in. Well, I've been getting a few parts in over the last few days. I uh, wanted to give a quick review on a couple of the more expensive items uh, that people don't normally install necessarily on their cars. Uh, they're more performance upgrades if you're not going basically all out like I have with this with the solid motor mounts and stuff like that. You're not typically gonna do this kind of mod uh, reason being, I put solid motor mounts in this car and solid trans mounts. None of it's going to move, so that in turn will change uh, the possibilities you can use for shifters, stuff like that. If you have the rubber mounts in your car still, you'll still have to use, if you want more precise shifts, you're going to have to use the uh, shifter carrier that comes factory in these cars that bolts to the back of the trans and then bolts into the bottom of the tunnel. Otherwise, you're going to have really sloppy shifts if you use what I've bought here, which is a floor mount shifter and then also a double shear selector rod uh, just to tighten things up, give it a lot better feel for the transmission, more precise shifts. Again, you can feel the transmission better while you're doing that as well as uh, not accidentally hitting a gear that you're not trying to hit unless you're really trying to do it. So the double shear selector rod I went with is the UUC, which is the common one a lot of people get for the, uh, this one's for a 328. Since I switched to the ZF Trans, the selector rod needs to be from either a 1990 or 1995 and up uh, 328, 325, or M3. So this one's for 328 and M3. And then any of the 95, 325s that have the ZF Trans. So I've had one of these before, and it's a pretty nice piece. It's machined out of a single piece, as far as I can tell, because you can see all the machining marks on it. If I hold it real close, you might be able to if it wants to focus. But anyways, it is machined out of a single piece, and you can tell the factory rod, which I don't have out of the car yet, the, it doesn't have these pins like this one does where you put it on and you put the pin through. It just has a linkage that would go basically down the one side of it with rods sticking out either side. And then it has these retainer clips like this has when it goes through the actual shift shaft in the transmission. So this one will help to stiffen up the linkage between the transmission and the shifter. It's got these nice, I don't some kind of plastic, look like they're probably ABS plastic washers in here, uh, just to keep things from transmitting as much through the actual selector shaft itself. But, so this will be a lot better. Those of you who have had these know that, for one, they're less prone to breakage because they're super beefy compared to the stamped piece that comes factory, but also, They'll make it so much better feeling to actually ship the car. So that's one piece that I got, but I also went with, like I said, a floor mount shifter. Uh, the one I went with was a company called PMC. It's one of the cheaper versions. Um, she gave you a nice little baggie with some stickers and um, there was a pop socket that I put on my phone and a little keychain, but the shifter itself, some of you probably seen this one before. Uh, personally, I like this design quite a bit because it makes it so you don't have to drill holes in your car unless for some reason your car is weird and it's got the spot where this wouldn't be able to fit. But the E36 from the factory has a circular hole that the shifter goes through. And all you do for this is you take off all these bolts around the outside here. And then this ring on the bottom comes off of here. You put that in the round hole that the shifter comes through initially. And then you just put that ring back on the bottom. You tighten all these bolts down and then it's secured to the tunnel. So that is the reason, in this case, with the solid mounts and this and that double shear selector rod, you don't need the carrier that comes in the car from the factory. This should, hopefully, which I'll give it an honest review once I've actually used it, once the car is actually moving and stuff, or even just once it's installed, 
uh, as far as the feel of it, which I may do today, the um, we'll try to get this installed today, but the longevity of this over time, uh, once it does get wet and stuff like that, because as you can see, it's got a pivot ball in there. Uh, once it's installed, there won't actually be anything protecting this from any road grime or anything like that unless I make something that um, protects the bottom of that and keeps all the water from stuff and stuff from going in there. The nice thing it kind of looks like is there's this other ring of bolts you can see here. So it looks like it is serviceable if you do need to service it. If you need to uh, oil it, grease it, or clean up any um, possible corrosion that you may get in that joint. But otherwise, it feels really good. It feels tight. There's no, if you hold it tight, there's no side to side play in it. So it tells me that that ball is nice and tight in there. So I think this should be a good budget shifter. This was about $130 off of Drift HQ, uh, their website, with like, it was like $12 shipping. So it was $140 some dollars shipped. Compare that to the Beamer World Shifter. I've had a Beamer World Shifter. It's very similar um, in basic design. It doesn't have this ring, but it has a plate that has a pivot ball in it as well. And for the same price as the Beamer World, I could get almost three of these. So it was a decision I made. If I don't end up liking this, I can always get a different, later, different one later, but this one was 130 bucks. So it was kind of a no brainer to at least give it a try since I've spent plenty of money on the rest of the stuff that's here, um, I figured this would probably be fine enough for the time being. So this is the 440 millimeter tall version, has a tall plastic knob on here. So this should sit, so the steering wheel should sit about, the top of the steering wheel should sit about right here. So this should be just sitting just to the left or just the right of the steering wheel to make it really easy to shift and everything. But this comes with a little brass bushing down there, which I'm, I haven't checked the, the pin fit of the uh, shear pin or the pin in the double shear selector rod yet inside this actual bushing or in the back of the transmission yet. I know I had some problems with my Beamer World 1 that I had to shave a little bit off the outside of the bottom of the pivot for the Beamer World Shifter for it to fit, it was super tight. But we'll see if that happens here. So I do need to get the old shifter out. I will get that out and then I will start uh, installing this one. All right, so I've got the shift shaft out along with the shifter carrier and the shifter itself. So this is what I wanted to point out. So this is the factory one here and it's a this is single shear, obviously. This one's double shear because it's got two sides right here with the pin. So it's got two places to shear. This one, these like to break right here. I believe it's friction welded on, but over time they will fatigue from going backward and forward. So it'll actually work these loose, which actually this one is actually starting to crack. You can kind of see it right there. If it'll focus, it probably won't, but it is starting to crack right there. So it's probably a good thing that I found this, not necessarily because I'm gonna need it anymore, but it probably would've broken eventually if I would've keep driving with it like this. But, so that's the main difference. Also, like I said, this one's from the 325 because that's what this car is. So the transmission uh, shift shaft length or the shifter linkage length is actually different. You can see there at the bottom, the ZF trans is shorter by, it looks like roughly half an inch, at least where these, link up so you need this guy for the ZF trans to make up that difference. So this is the actual shifter carrier and the shifter you can see here. This is an eBay shifter. It's one of the cheap $37 ones as far as I can tell because there's no stampings or anything on it. Uh, it looks like a B&M knockoff and they make one that's very similar. Same colors and everything but this one probably was not a B&M because it did not feel as good as a B&M should have felt on that. So you can kind of tell it's definitely worn out because you can hear the 
hear the play in there. So this uh, mono ball here is probably worn out way past its use, which probably explains why it was grinding going into first. Um, only occasionally going from reverse to first. But anyways, it could be a trans issue, but that transmission is no longer in here, so it doesn't really matter. But this is the carrier that you need if you don't have uh, the solid mounts and you still want a floor shifter. Actually, well, if you have a floor shifter, you don't need this at all, but if you have rubber mounts, you're gonna want this with this kind of short throw here, because that's the only way you're gonna be able to get a shifter that's actually stable uh, with rubber mounts. So, but as you can tell, super dirty, crusty, don't re really recommend one of these. They're not bad, but this one definitely should have gotten more uh, life out of it before starting to get super sloppy. So, but for $37, you can just buy another one, slap it in on a weekend, because literally one clip here. But anyways, I will start installing that, and I will see you in just a minute. All right, so we are back inside the car. As you can see, I've already got the shifter out, so there's nothing sitting here now. So. Like I was saying earlier, there's a round hole that this shifter should fit perfectly into. So this originally had a couple pieces of foam and some other stuff in it that isolates road noise, stuff like that. Any moisture, anything. So we've got, this guy was around the base of the shifter. So it just keeps stuff from coming up through there. And then there was this guy. It keeps road noise down, I, I'm assuming, because it's just a big piece of foam. Neither of these are going to be going back in, and I'll have to figure out something, because those only fit around the factory shifter. But as far as this guy goes, the... I'll place this down in here. I'll show you actually how it fits in here. It's actually really nice. So with it installed down there, you can see... If it's like perfectly right inside the recess area there when you set it down in there. So I think the issue is gonna be feeding up bolts. I don't know if I'm able to maybe slide it to the side a little bit and start a bolt, but I'll have to figure that out. So I will do that because it's gonna be hard to hold the camera and uh, try to do all this all at once. So I'm going to try and do that and then I'll just explain the process that I used and if I can kind of show you guys I will. But I will see you in just a minute. Alright, so I figured out an easy way to do this. Actually, surprisingly didn't take me long at all. But if you can see those zip ties right there. So I just used a zip tie through a zip tie to hold up the, well to go through there and not fall through the bolt hole. And then on the back side, I just use another zip tie to actually pull the ring up to secure it on the bottom since there's not really an easier way to do it. And then once I had those in, you can actually see I've got two bolts in here now. So I can actually take those zip ties out and put the rest of the bolts in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera again. And then we will go to the bottom side and start hooking the linkage up. All right, so now we're under the car. You can see... This guy right here is where the linkage connects to on the transmission. And then this guy is where the other end of it goes to. So those two are the only thing that need to be connected together from the shifter to this linkage anymore. Cause you don't have the, that shifter carrier used to actually slide into your, I said earlier, bolt it in, it doesn't. It just slides into this bushing, which you can replace these bushings if you're again, not gonna put solid trans mounts in. But in this case, it made no sense for me to replace that just for basically a stock feeling shifter. I much prefer this floor mount shifter. And I'll show you why in just a little bit. Once this is actually hooked up, I'll actually show you where everything will sit and then go through the gears and show you actually how good the shifting actually feels. At least I can tell you how good it feels. I can't actually have you feel how good it feels, but so I will install that real quickly. All right, there you go. You can see it's installed. I only ended up using one of the plastic washers on the outside. It was actually a really tight fit around both of these. So around the actual uh, shift shaft here, which I could probably add one on the outside of there because that is rattling. But this one, you can tell is super tight because I put one on this side. So I'll probably end up putting one on there too. So. 
but I will see you up top. I'll show you exactly why I really like these shifters. So I will see you in just a minute. All right, so ignore the mess. I've got a bunch of stuff just stored in here. As you can see, glove box sag, got to the extreme new glove box. But here's the shifter. Again, the reason I like it, it's less than a hand length away from the actual steering wheel. It's super long, it looks really nice. It's like super notchy too, but the uh, shifter sits in a really good spot, but that will be all I have for you today, but it feels really good. It's compared to the Beamer World one, it feels about the same, so no money lost there, not uh, buying the more expensive one, but Install's not too bad. Like I said, you can use those zip ties. So if anybody sees this video and wants to use it that way, you can. All right, so after I filmed this, I realized that I had the wrong length uh, selector rod. So I will have to be contacting UUC. Um, I'm gonna get the 189 millimeter one. Uh, the one I got was 198 millimeter. So it's off by about a centimeter. So as you saw earlier in the video, the Selector rod for the transmission that I had in this car originally was about a half inch shorter, which is about 12, 13 millimeters shorter. So hopefully the nine millimeter difference should be enough that it brings that selector back to center. As you can see, when I was playing with it, the selector or the actual shifter was coming pretty close to hitting the dash. And then when it's in, what would be neutral is actually second or fourth gear. So I will have to contact UC, get the correct selector rod, and then I will install that later. But as far as the install goes, you can see it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can use that zip tie method that I used in there and it will work perfectly if you don't have another hand. If you have another hand, then you can just have them hold the ring up from the bottom. But Otherwise, you can use those small zip ties and do it exactly like I did, and it'll hold it up for you. So, but that'll be it for this video. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Dad by Garage, Dad by Garage, Garage Official on Instagram uh, for updates and more stuff. Because there should be more coming on this, uh, the actual engine install. So. The plumbing is done. It was just a matter of putting the factory hose back in and then I'm going to have to reroute the part that went to the coolant bottle. But that'll be another video. But thanks for watching. Again, like, subscribe, tell your friends, share this video, and we'll see you next time.